All right, I am so excited. I have not seen you since Seattle, mm -hmm. uh, which feels like uh, 15 and a half years ago. I know. Uh, based on <laughs> It, it feels like when when was that? Nineteen ninety four. I mean, it sounds so horrible, but pre pandemic feels like decades ago. It does. It um, the world has changed substantially, which That's I love. But one of the things I also love, you've been well. All right, let me. We're gonna start talking like old friends. Uh, okay. Folks are tuning in right now on the live video. I am so excited to be here for Ace Universe. I'm Angela Brochet, your host. This is. I don't, do I need to introduce this man? This is Josh Brolin. Jeremy um, Renner. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is now what? Hawkeye. Is that really? Is that really what happened? Um, this is Josh Brolin. Uh, you might know him from a couple, a couple of movies, a couple of things that he's done. Um, Thanos being one that a lot of folks have a lot of questions about. Cable being one of my personal favorites. Also. Doom, which we will get to, um, because it you have stepped into a whole nother fandom, uh, and a whole nother literally world, uh, mm -hmm. with that. But I say, I was gonna say, you've been very busy, even though we, you know, the world has changed a little bit. You know, how how have you been? How how how's everything going? I've been I've been, I've been good. It's funny because after Dune, I spent, I mean, I've been really good, but for reasons that no fan is interested in maybe they are i don't know because it's been more about family than anything after dune i took a or was it before dune no it was before dune it was after deadpool i took a i took an extended break and i had never taken a break i had never because i was somebody who was kind of meaningless in the grand scheme of things not meaningless here but meaningless in work-wise and I worked here and there and I maybe did a job a year but um when w when I finally started to work more and had more choice I, I I was in the mentality that you just work I mean that's what you do like I never understood why actors like did a job and then took a two-year break I was like who does that like nobody does that like when you work you work and I had this kind of work ethic and mentality that when I finally had jobs and choice and all that kind of stuff, I just, I did kind of one after the other. And then I had kids again, or I had more kids, I should say, not again. I didn't have the same kids again. I, I mean, you have to be, you have to be clear when you're talking to genre folks, especially with the roles you've played. <laughs> I had different, I had more children. And, and then I got, I just, I wanted to stay home. So I did. And that was the first time. So the, the thing that brought me back out and then I'll shut up, but was the fact that we had I had this idea. Somebody I, I was at a, a fundraiser, one of the few fundraisers I've ever been to in Texas. And somebody said that I looked like an overgrown Peter Dinklage. And I was like, huh, is that insulting? Is that not insulting? But then I got it. I was like, yeah, I got a big head. We look the same. We have small noses. I get it. And I always thought that was funny enough. And then I finally called Peter a couple of years later and I said, hey, what do you think about doing a brothers movie together? And he was like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. So anyway, we came up with that and we started pitching the idea. And I went to Legendary and pitched the idea. And Mary Parent kept staring at me. And, uh, and I couldn't figure out why. I thought she didn't like the pitch. And afterwards she said, not only do I like the pitch, I just realized who should play uh, Gurney Halleck in Dune. And uh, so it didn't come from Denis, it came from her. And uh, so we got a, a double job out of it. So now that I've finished out of range, the next job I do is me and Peter Dinklage and Glenn Close is playing our mom. And Brendan Fraser is playing the nemesis, who's amazing, who's had this massive comeback, which has been great. So anyway, that's that. Look. Brendan Fraser and Doom Patrol is a whole other conversation, and oh, how oh, I love that show so much. Right, um, it's coming back soon. Um, that is incredible, and it's one of the things. Like I remember when we first met, we had like this conversation about like the pacing of all of this, and like exactly. how gigs come and how how right. stuff works. And you know, yeah. yeah, you're right. You you've been working consistently, mm -hmm. but you know, you've been in these these sci-fi fantasy genre roles for a really long time. Like, we, of course, we know you from Goonies, you know, mm -hmm. Men in Black 3, which you were hilarious. Um, Jonah Hex, Cable, and Deadpool. Like, 
you do all of this work and it's all really very much character based driven, right? Like mm-hmm. you step into these very big character roles. You almost kind of disappear at times, you know, mm-hmm. for you and how you approach these roles as an actor and how you like, once you get the script, because we've had, we've also had a conversation like what happens once someone gets the script, like yeah. once you get the script, how do you start thinking about filling these roles out like how do you step into them because they progressively have gotten bigger right like you've gone from you know stuff in mimic and you know jonah hex being big and then into like cable and deadpool which is a whole like cheap like you you stepped into a whole world that people love so very much and then again as thanos like I don't want to say does it take a toll, but like these are very big, like in that vein, like how do you prepare? How do you work with them? And, you know, do you feel like now this idea of taking this time off is like, oh yeah, no, I've given everything I have to this role. I need a break. No, it's not even that I've given everything I have to this role because I feel like no matter what it is, I've always done that anyway. My my father and I had dinner last night at his place and we were talking about that and he It was a funny question to ask your boy, but he goes, how do you have the kind of work ethic you do? And I was so just even by not answering, even if I didn't answer, it doesn't matter. I don't need to answer the fact that my dad asked me that question. I thought was pretty amazing, which was a great compliment, you know? Um, So whether it's Jiva theater in Rochester, New York and a play that, you know, is regional or, you know, it's Avengers. I think that, you know, the, the, the the way in for me has always been, you know, a thousand percent, you know, and and I'm willing to look stupid. And I, I do call it a profession of embarrassment because it is, mm. you know, and if you're willing to look stupid in front of 100 people on the set, you can get through all that kind of bad acting and find something magical with a good director. And and then what the fans end up seeing is something special once we've weeded out all the crap. Um, and, you know, that was the case with Deadpool. That was the case. And then there's a there's kind of a, you know, a fate or a destiny thing that's involved, because when I when I said yes to to Thanos, you know, they had given me a big Bible and 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 really kind of talked me up. But it wasn't for, you know, a massive, massive part in two final films of a 10 year span. It was meant more as a cameo. So it was never the size of the role that that was like, oh, I want to do that because it's going to push me further up into that fame or stardom or whatever. It was like, what's the role? You know, the role is not one of the Avengers. It's the nemesis to all the Avengers. I'm in. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I can do that. Well, you know, you have to do mocap. I don't care. It's all acting. <laughs> You know, they said, well, is it less acting than it is when you're practical with somebody? No, it's all acting. It's all, you know, it, it's all you know, if, if you don't have somebody there to bounce something off of, you're left up, you know, more to your imagination. And then it feels more like I've said it before, but like black box theater in Lower East Side, New York in the late 70s or something. It's all, you know, we don't have any money. OK, this is a gun. Well, it's a little bird toy. No, it's a gun. And if you believe it's a gun, they'll believe it's a gun, you know, and it goes back to that, which was really fun, really, really, really fun. So to answer your question, how these things, you know, oh, you've gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. But I I didn't that that was never the there was never a thought process around that. You know, Deadpool worked out very much in my favor. You know, Deadpool was supposed to be four movies. Maybe there'll be more. I don't know what what, you know, uh, Marvel has in store, but it turned out to be one really fun movie for me. And I'm good. Yeah, and, and it was great. Like, look, I, one of the things, and, and I just, I gotta say, I think a lot of people forget how funny you are, even when you're not, so like <laughs> when you're grown as deadpan, um, yeah. because you, because what people know is Thanos, like that's, you know, that's the, that's the thing. Like they're like, and I'm like, oh just- no. Yeah. Um, and I think I love the fact in Deadpool, even though Cable is very serious, you really did get a chance to get some amazing comedic beats in that movie. And you are, personal opinion, this is me gushing. You are a very funny human. Um, and I hope that we see more of it. 
Um, so yeah. that being said, you know, do you feel like you've had a chance to bring some of your own personality and experience to the characters you've played? Because, I mean, again, your your career is way past genre, right? Like, you have an extremely expansive career throughout different genres of storytelling. Like, do you feel like you've been able to bring some of your personal experience or do you feel like you start from a clean slate? And do you have, and this came from a lot of the fans, do you have a character you most relate to? Um, you always bring personal experience. You know, I find, you know, I, I know early on I would, you know, I was in a corner and I'd be, if it was a heavy scene, I'd be getting dark in a corner. And then I found that that actually worked against me, you know, and I'm bringing up personal experiences and kind of Stanislavski-esque methods and trying to utilize all that. And then I found that, especially in drama, that the lighter I am on set, um, the better it is because then I feel like I'm actually going somewhere and it's a new, it's an, it's an organic and new reaction when I do the scene. So me, I'm at my most open when I'm, uh, when I'm volleying with people on the set. So I'm very close with the crew and I'm close with the actors and, and there's a lot of fun to be had. And then once you get into a scene, it's almost like schizophrenia. You, you pop into a different mode of yourself and you I feel very raw in that mode and very reactive in that mode because I haven't spent all day there. So I, th I think that that, so there's always a sense of the personal that you bring. And I think as you get older, you're more okay with that as opposed to this uh, idea of uh, cultivating something hyper-specific for a scene. Like, you know, like crying in a scene, which I had to do not too long ago. If I think of joyful things, it opens me up and makes me very emotional as opposed to something really sad, which closes me down and puts me in like survival mode. So it's a, it's an interest. It, it's cool. It's like photography. It just never you never can master it. It's just some, you build a skill and all that. But, you know, you can never really rest on your laurels. It's something that's that surprises me every time, every time I do it. And then to answer the other part of your question, there was, <laughs> there was one role, <laughs> uh, Sicario, that I felt like I had really like not earned my money. I mean, not earned my paycheck, you know? And I, I felt like I had, I, I just felt like I wasn't doing anything. And, and my wife was there at the time. We weren't married yet. And she was like, you know, it's, it's going well. And Denise really likes what you're doing and you and Benicio and you and, and uh and emily and i was like yeah man i feel like i'm phoning this fucking thing in i just feel like i'm not doing anything and 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 it's and it's a role that people really respond to a lot and the people who really know me closely they go yeah that's you and i go that's not me i'm not like that and they're like yeah kind of like that <laughs> it's like that was acting <laughs> kind of dry, um, a little sarcastic anyway I kind of love it. Um, all right, so Dune, we got to talk about it. it yeah. It's the thing. I, it's been breaking the internet since people announced. I am a big Dune fan. You cannot see oh, it in right. here. There are multiple Dune Funkos. I own every single adaptation that has come oh, to right. screen, including miniseries. Dune mm. is like a big, especially like for folks who saw the original movie, right? If you became a fan of that movie, you're like, where is this going? Is this going to be Hodorowski's dude? How is this going to work? Like, and and from that, but because I'm sure you heard all of that in of the beginning, right? Yeah. Um, also, great documentary for those who haven't seen it. You should yeah. see it. Oh, um, so yeah. um, it's now break again. It's broken the internet. A trailer came out during um, Comic Con at Home week. It was not part of Comic Con at Home, but mm. it did take everyone's attention. You know, talk to me about what it's like stepping into this other vast fandom, right? Like Dune is this thing, like multiple books, tabletop games, a video game, several adaptations. Like, what is it like now stepping into this new role, especially as Gertie Halleck? And we'll get to that in a second. Like Gertie, is um, it, it's it's. It's real, you know, again, when, when I knew Denis was doing it and, 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 and he's a, a close friend. So 
I, I, there was something that happened with with a, a smaller role in Arrival, and I and I decided not to do it. And I think that he thought that maybe it was too small of a role. I don't know what he thought, or maybe he just didn't see me in that role. Um, but the opportunity to work with there's not many left and there's definitely not a lot of new directors and if you could consider him sort of new not really but sort of new um who have his ability who have his scope his able his ability to 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 hold scope up and actually kind of mathematically structure it you know and we have a again we have a lot of fun on the set so I knew Dune, I knew Jodorowsky's Dune, I knew Lynch's Dune, I remember seeing Lynch's Dune in the in the theater. Um, I loved him, but I did, I always felt, it, it was kind of like Shantaram, the, 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 the novel mm -hmm. Shantaram, like Johnny Depp had the rights for a long time. I knew Gregory David Roberts, for I've known him for a long time. We talked about how to make it a movie or should you make it a series and have 10 episodes because it's such a big book and all that kind of stuff. And there and there's a similarity with Dune because you go, it's such a profound book. And if you talk to George Lucas, like Dune was used, Dune was very, you know, instrumental in creating Star Wars and that kind of high philosophical, existential, metaphoric, metaphysical, all that stuff, man. And it's highly, highly, highly intelligent. But you have a massive book. So why didn't anybody ever think of just doing <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, just well, the there's a mini series, but it's it's still not big enough. I think what you just said right there is like the scope of Dune is so it big. It has right? to be big. It, it has, has to be, be massive. It feels massive. It feels deep. It feel when you see the worms, yeah. the sandworms, you want to be overwhelmed by it. And like if you can if you can make that leap of faith, which is easy for me, and just lend yourself to that story and to that level of storytelling when i saw okay so i'll tell you this story really quick i saw it with a guy zev boro who who is one of the executive producers of the thing that i just did for amazon out of range and um we got along and he's this great kind of neurotic new yorker and 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 we're, we, we're seemingly the opposite but he's incredibly intelligent and a massive dune fan has read the whole series probably three times as a kid. And so when I when we saw the movie in Santa Fe, they screened the movie for us when it was finally done. And I was so blown away. I mean, it's it's I can say, I think I think I can safely say it's a masterpiece. I mean, it truly is a cinematic masterpiece. What he was able to do and hold all those characters and give all those characters their time of day, but then also hold the story on top of that and do justice to the story and 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 the the lighting which was done by greg fraser who i ended up doing a book with we just finished our book which is his photographs and my writing that's going to come out around the time that dune comes out um all this stuff it just was one of those moments where it all comes together no country was kind of like that too where it was like yeah. did you have the feeling that something was going to be great and you're like no i'm having a good time and it's and it's I love doing this, but you don't know until you see it how great it's going to be. But the point of the story is Zev Boro, who's 48 years old, when it ended, <laughs> he started screaming at the top of his lungs. He was like, yes, yes, yes. And I was like, dude, dude, shh, quiet, quiet. He was like, oh, my God. That's what I saw when I was a kid. That's what I saw in my head. This that's is what it. we all want. That's what we all want. All, that's all Dune fans truly no, want. Okay, so now I got a question. A diehard fan do that was everything. So I got a question. Yes. Gurney Halleck. Yeah. Gurney Halleck was played by Sir Patrick Stewart. Yes, he was. For a lot of us, that's the Gurney we know. Okay. Talk to me about because I know because and knowing you and like having talked to you and knowing like what your thoughts are on bringing a character to life. This is not a comparison question. This is what can we expect from your Gurney Halleck? 
Like, what you know, are you excited to see? It's going to be what it is. It's not, it's not you know, it, it's, I, I, I know Patrick Stewart's Gurney Halleck. I really liked it a lot. I, I, I think it was really good for me that it was, you know, there's some things you, like when I did Old Boy, you felt like you had to live up to something. And that, and, and that was kind of a untouchable thing. And I kind of knew it was going to be untouchable. Whereas this, there was enough time that's passed where it, there, it feels a little dated, especially, mm. especially technologically. They just didn't have what was needed in order to no. really see that story at its best. And and that has nothing to do with the filmmaker, has nothing to do with the actors. Great. But I But I think that this group felt like not only was it in the right hands, but we were technologically, especially having just done Avengers, we were technologically uh, in, in a very, very advanced place where we could see these things as a reality, as, a, as opposed to something that looks a little cheesy and you have to really lend yourself to it being a reality when you know it's not. Whereas this, you actually start to think it's reality. And Gurney Halleck is fun, man. You know, he, you know, the ballast set and the singing and, and all that kind of stuff. Like, are you going to yeah. see that? It may be this movie. It may be the next movie. Did I do that? Yes. Um, is it? Is it? Uh, but I don't know where it where it fits in. I do know where it fits in, but I'm not. <laughs> You're like I'm not telling any I'm of you. Not, you have to watch the movie. Fair, 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 fair. Yeah. Um, all right, so I got a couple more questions, and then we got to go to fan questions because I don't want to forget the fans out there. Yeah. They've got so many very specific questions. Yes. Um, you know, you're an actor, a voice performer, director, a writer, producer. A, you've been a mad titan. Clearly, we've talked about that. You literally have every place in the process you kind of put your hands in. Are there roles in the creative process that you'd like to explore more, and what should would be what should we be expecting? Um. I, I like, you know, I just finished a play. I just finished, nobody wants to hear this, but I just finished writing a play that I'll direct. And then, and then directing is becoming more and more of a reality just because I think it just in the way my, you know, I think one of the best compliments I ever got was that I think big picture as opposed to just my character, which may be a fault um, as an actor, but maybe a good thing as a producer or director. I've been producing a lot more. Um, I just finished something called Outer Range, which was probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Seven months, a, a, a lot of uh, producing challenges, but I think that we've come up with something. I mean, back to your question before, you know, it's like, how do you pick the characters you do and why, you know, and again, some of these are successful. You don't know if they're going to be successful or not. I think I, I lean more toward the absurd and the stranger. And whether that's science fiction, whether that's a dark, you know, drama, whatever it is, whether it's no country, whether it's, you know, or something profound like Milk, which is comes from a very real story. You know, I I I, I, I like to walk that line where where failure almost feels imminent. <laughs> mm. if you have some if you have a group of people that are truly exceptional then you kind of get away with murder and 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 produce something that's really like special and and has an impact and i like that and i like being more in charge of of what that is and so i, I i've really enjoyed producing even though it's very very difficult um and, and putting things together because you see them truly from the beginning until the end and you see where they're not good. And then, you know, you start to understand talking with Paul Thomas Anderson and while he, while he's going crazy because he just finished a film and he's editing it and he looks truly insane or he'll send me a video of just staring, you know, and I understand now I understand. I didn't understand so much before, but now I understand. I get so, it. Yeah. So more, more of that stuff, just more involvement. The acting is still really fun, but it, it takes a certain role. Like Brothers with Dinklage, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I always wanted to work with Glenn Close. Dune is massive because it's it's just profound. Again, it's this big question of how do you actually, Jodorowsky, how do you make this, you know, the greatest film never made? Well, it was never made for a reason. You know what I mean? You have Lynch's, but that was a while ago. But why not between Lynch and now? because you needed Denis, you needed Greg Fraser, you needed this group of actors and you needed yeah. the uh, VFX to be uh, 
this advanced? Yeah, to get that scope. And I think, so one of the things that I have a question before we go to fan questions, yeah. speaking of future projects, what can you tell me about this untitled Josh Brolin project, if that, anything at all? Um, that, that, it sounds potentially hilarious. I think I think it's funny. <laughs> I think it's funny. I think it's funny. That's all <laughs> I can go from. Um, Josh Brolin Untitled Project, which is what it will be called, Untitled Josh Brolin Project. It's about basically a guy who's been uh, kicked out of Hollywood and goes back to his hometown to find his real self. But once a celebrity, always a celebrity. So he finds his way back into adoration. <laughs> oh, I'm ready for this. All right. So bad all the actors that I can't stand. Oh, no. oh, please don't name names, but also everyone's like, name oh, names. Oh, oh. Um, all right, so first fan question, Maria Marcel, is there anything you can tell us about your upcoming show, Outer Range? Um, what can you tell us? What, what can I tell you? It's it, it's an absurd story. That it's, it's slightly metaphysical about a guy who finds a hole on his ranch. And what is the hole? And what's, when you find out the relationship between him and the hole, it's how he changes and the reaction to that change in a very small town in bucolic Wyoming. There you go. That was pretty good, actually. Wow, that was very good. That was great. Um, all right, next question is from Christina. Of all the characters played so far, which one was your biggest challenge and why? I think Deadpool was a major challenge just because there was such expectation. I, I don't mm. I'm not really I, 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 like there, you know, MCU, there was the there, there was a thing like there's never been a good bad guy, which that is no comment on anybody who's ever played a bad guy. But I know that was out there. That was meaningless to me. That made no difference in any choice I ever made. Um, because I go, well, if I'm just another bat, I mean, whatever, I can only do what I do with Deadpool. It was a little different because Deadpool was such a, such a, a an, an amazing, unexpected, risque, you know, uh, um, uh, film and, and manifestation of, of Tim and Ryan that there was all this expectation on cable. Did I really feel it? No, not necessarily. I felt it in the film, the film needing to be good. And that, that to me is never a great thing. It's never a great feeling having that pressure. I think the, the freer you are, the better it will be. Um, but that was tough and old boy was tough because I love Spike so much. And, and uh, the studio got very involved and I think it became a different movie than what we intended, but. I think those are the, again, they're more about the movies than about the characters. Yeah. All right. So J Lady Bird, what was your favorite part about working? Oh, the goo. Sweet. Say more about the Goonies. I talked over you. What would you no, say? No, no, no. <laughs> um, what, what was your favorite part about working on Deadpool 2? I, I, I love the actors. Zazie is one of my favorites because w w when I, Joker, which is probably one of my favorite movies ever. Um, I think it's one of the most incredible movies. And the fact that that made as much money as it did was such a solace for me because it was dark. But I thought Zazie was great in that. Um, but I like that. And I just I, I like the nature of it. You know, I didn't like not eating donuts. I didn't like that. And then I went to a place called Cardam Donuts in. Ryan was eating something and I go, what are you doing? Like I know we're all dieting, we're working out and doing all that. I mean, you're being superheroes. You've got you've got a routine. Apparently, I'm, I was obviously learning, and uh, and he goes, "Well, this is my cheat day," and I was like, "What's a cheat day?" And he was like, "You know, you have to refill. You have to you know, your 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 muscles and all that." And I, that's all I needed to hear. So I went to Cardam's Donut to get one donut, and I ended up having eight. And I walked out of Cardam's Donuts and it's in an area that's kind of drug infested. And I looked like the most severe drug addict you've ever seen. Cause I was tweaking so bad because of the sugar. It's like <laughs> Cardam Donut. Um, so wow. I, 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 that was a, that was a bad moment for me. That was the hardest thing I've ever done. It's not eat donuts. I look, I, I like hear that donuts are quite addictive. Um, from Manish, 
Yeah. What members of the what members of the Goonies do you think would have survived the Thanos? Why? Hey, how do you even answer that? How do you even answer that? All the Goonies are still around. All the I believe the Goonies survived. I, I think I think All they survived. The Anyway. I mean, they're survivors, <laughs> period. Um, CC3000, Sylvie, uh, what do you think Thanos would do in his spare time? Does he have spare time? I think, I think, what wasn't there kind of a moment, the moment that I loved in, in I, I think it was the, the end of the first or the beginning of the second movie, beginning of the last movie, where he was sitting in his like tiki hut. He reminded me of Brando a lot. You know, Thanos loves Tahiti. He's a big Tahitian fan. And he has a lot of uh, a lot of kids running around in Tahiti. And I think that's his favorite thing to do. I can, I can see Thanos and, being like in a pair of like swim shorts just chilling on the beach. <laughs> swim shorts, chilling on the beach, that's ladies it. and gentlemen. I mean, I, I, are, are you Thanos? Okay, so... Um, Nick Verstel, do you think Cable would have survived the snap had he been in the MCU during the events of Infinity War Endgame? I like that question because that gets really involved in like who Cable is and what the different machinations of Cable are. Right, because like there's time issues and paradoxes. Oh so and it's like, could he travel time? time virus. Thanos could travel time. Could he chase him and all that? And I love all that stuff. Like it's unanswerable, but thanks for the question. <laughs> He's like, I don't, I don't. Who Maybe. knows? Someone will write it one day. Yeah. Uh, Steven Alvarez, tell us about how Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino helped you film your audition tape for No Country for Little for Old Men. Old oh, Men, yeah. They, they, I, I didn't get the part, by the way. I didn't. I, I asked Robert because Robert always carried around a little video camera, and I said, "Would you do me a favor? I have to audition for this thing that Sam Shepard had told me about the book." I read the book and then I heard they were doing auditions and they couldn't find the guy. And I was doing Grindhouse at the time. And I said, can you just use your little camera? And he said, why don't we just use our, our movie camera, our Genesis million dollar Genesis camera. So Quentin kind of directed it. Robert shot it. And when the Quentins got it, I've told the story a million times, but when the, when the, the, the brothers got it, they said who lit it because they thought it was so beautifully lit. I don't even think they mentioned me, nor do I think they really <laughs> even saw that I was on the tape. But then I got in there for a last audition, probably two months after that. And that's when I got the role. So wow. nothing against Quentin or Robert. Actually, it's a major compliment to them because they were blown away by the level of the audition, not from an acting standpoint, but from a producing standpoint. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's the small things. Yeah. All right. So I know you have, we have so many more questions, but I know we are out of time with you. Thank you so much for coming. For folks who are watching right now, make sure Ace is ready to assist you with your Josh Brolin uh, autographs, signatures, all of this great stuff. So make sure you send your items to be sent, signed by this lovely gentleman. I never know which way to like do it when it's virtual anymore. It's like, I feel like Vanna White just go this way. It's like the new Vanna White. Um, <laughs> you can purchase your autographs for our featured partners now available in Europe and Asia as well. Check out the description below for more information. Again, uh, I'm Angela Groshe. This is the Josh Brolin. Thank you. It's always just, it's a joy. Thank you so much. You. You're just easy. You just, I mean, not, not in a bad way, in a really good way. You're not easy. I mean, I, I took it, I took it the right way. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Really, it's nice to see you again. It's good to see you too.